So this week we have Luke Chu, aka Navi Luke. That's what I call him. He is a world famous Chinese American artist, visual artist. You've seen his work. His work is like hella bootlegged around the world. This is a great conversation because we hadn't talked in a while and it's always good times, good times, but he keeps it super real. We discuss everything from colonoscopies to, to TikTok. If he has or hasn't edited his own private Wikipedia page, how one of his college professors told him that he was a mediocre designer but he was a better illustrator and how that changed the trajectory of his life, how addiction informed his artwork. And he keeps it 1000 when I ask him to share with us the realities of wanting to evolve as an artist, but also not abandoning his fans. And before I say anything else, I want to really give a huge shout out to one of our Ohana, Lofa, Lofa Sexy Beast. He's you know, a huge supporter of all of the artists, especially the ones that are part of my family. And um, he's had some health stuff go down recently. So Lofa, if you hear this, we are glad that you are okay. We're sending all the healing vibes to you out in Hawaii. And I'm so happy that you're still here with us. And we hope to see you soon. And whatever you need, we're here for you. That's for Lofa. Navi Luke, man. One for the books. Keeping it real. I think you guys are all going to enjoy this. So, let's do this. Navi Luke! Ritzy Periwinkle. <laughs> Long time no see. Long time no fucking see. <laughs> How you been, man? Let's start off that way. How you been? Como estas? What's the deal? What's the word on the street? Uh, the word on the street is uh, I'm doing good. I'm hanging in there. Uh, I'm healthy, I think. Um, aside from, you know, the typical getting old stuff, you know, like blood pressure and cholesterol and, you know, <laughs> trying to eat like a young person. Have you had the big C yet? The, the, oh, yes. that seems to be oh, traveling yes. around I, I our, have our definitely had that. And I'm, I'm going to give all the young people who might tune into this a tip. <laughs> yes. Moisturizing wipes. <laughs> that's a hot no. tip for for the big C and for those who don't know because you're too young to understand you haven't been asked for this it's uh what's it called colonoscopy Col colonoscopy I was gonna call it colonoscopy <laughs> colonoscopy yes it's, I haven't yes. had one yet but it's it's around our peeps you know, oh it's our coming age groups <laughs> you, yeah, you have coming. to have it you know I, I had it's this coming. conversation um with a mutual friend of ours, uh, Jesse Yu, just recently. Oh. <laughs> and um, his solution Perks. is the Japanese super toilet. Oh. Wow. So, oh. Wow, Navi Luke, sirs. Wow, Navi Luke. <laughs> Who would have thought when we met many moons ago that mm -hmm. we would make it this far where we're talking about colonoscopies? <laughs> what, what's happening? What's happening to us? Who would have thought? You know, <laughs> you know, I, I, I want to believe that as we've gone on and, you know, made it like just a, we're on the edge of outer middle age, you know, <laughs> and I kind of feel like, like we're embracing it better than, you know, say the previous generation did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, we look like, better. We're cooler. We do, we do cooler things. Yep, we're we're still <laughs> like you know we 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 grew up with the conception of the internet, and you know we're we're embracing it just a little bit better. Though I will admit that, like I so I was recording a TikTok uh, recently, and my younger sister, <laughs> the unpackaging um, one, the unboxing <laughs> one. Uh yes, yes. Uh, my little sister was <laughs> like you know. Uh, opening up like little like filter things i was like what what are you doing <laughs> i have never seen this before <laughs> you know like you know for like transitions between like you know scenes like you do like the dumb like camera twists and whatever and yeah. because like you see those vi you see those like those tiktok videos where it's like a you know like someone you, 
it's like a third person shot where like you see them like dropping the camera or like tilting the camera around and whatever. And then like they stitch it all yeah. together. And it's like, you know, it's either like this amazing video with all these crazy like cuts or it's them using the selfie cam and trolling us. You know, <laughs> have you seen the troll? Have you, you seen the trolling ones too? Those are, those are always yes. hilarious. And, um, and then I was like, Oh, they actually have these effects built into the app you don't even have to really do any of the twisting and turning and whatever. You just need yeah. a gimbal now. Everyone yeah, needs a totally. Yeah. So totally needs a gimbal and shout out to your sister who is also, if you, if for those who did not know, she's my baby mama. I remember <laughs> when I was pregnant, she was like, Oh, that's my kid. I'm the, I'm the mom. I'm the dad. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's funny. It's funny that you mentioned it. Cause I just saw your unboxing video and I was like, I was like, well, look at Navi Luke getting all these angles. Who's shooting this for him? Like, who is behind this? Now the we young, know the young bloods, the young bloods in our lives, and a little bit, of, and a little, and a little bit of me, a little bit of me. So <laughs> amazing. But you okay, know, so... uh, then I I also learned about auto cut on oh. TikTok, and I was just like, nice. oh, there you go. <laughs> look at look, look at look. <laughs> We're starting off superbly. We're starting off with colon colonoscopies <sighs> and, and TikTok. I, I call them tip tops and the tip tops. Tip tops. Uh, <laughs> tip top tips. You know, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. The, what the world really wants to know. The Gen X perspective. Exactly. You get a little bit of like, you know, the physical bullshit. And then you're like, oh, but we're still techie here. We're still doing TikToks here. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. I don't. I have no idea what's coming next, and I probably will not be in, be prepared prepared for it because by the time the next app comes around, I'll finally get the hang of TikTok. When the younger generation, uh, you know, uh, claim it and be like, "Oh, it's for the olds now. TikTok's for the olds." Then, then oh, you finally get yeah. a hang of it. You're like, the, "I the, like the it here." Natural bear will be freaking like land. Will be like leading <laughs> the, this thing. You totally. Know? <laughs> so as soon as soon as you know, amazing. <laughs> like, how, how old is your son now? He just turned eleven in October. Um, one year left. One year before he start before the power switch happens. <laughs> no, but he's it already happened. It already <laughs> happened, Abby. Look, he he's eleven. He's eleven. And he looks like he's thirteen, fourteen. People can't believe he's eleven. His mm. voice is deep, sideways hugs like in in public. No, no full blown hugs. I'm sideways no, hugs. No, 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 no. I'm 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 on a sideways hug. Oh but God, I hate he's, that. He's talking. Yeah, he's talking about. He was just talking about the other day how he feels old. He's talking about like his young cousins are just realizing. He was talking about memes and like other things, and he was like, "Yeah, I feel me and my friend, my homie, da da da, how we feel really old." I'm going, "You're 11." You know, he was saying how when he's seven years old, he's gonna be like, "I remember in my day, we had to, you know, to email. We had to, you know, have a, we had a, a, a contraption that opened up like a book." Like he was like, and I was like, "Wow, man, wow." But Navi, look, tell me if you agree. We have discussions because you know he loves stuff that, we, like, I introduced to like the '80s and Transformers and Star Wars and all this stuff. And and I was telling him, Gen X we're the dopest generation because we we grew up analog went into the digital age and mm -hmm. you thank you you're welcome for marvel and star <laughs> wars stuff like that's and, us because we grew up and you know yeah well i mean then you also will have to thank the boomers to a certain degree because they're the ones who created it for us did they i mean they, they created they created it for their own nefarious reasons but we they, they, they created but who took it to the next level our generation did. Yeah, like yes. oh we love the basic arcade games oh let's make it into like this next level shit and right. then like oh we love the comics and we love these things let's make it into a franchise movies because we want to see that you know what i mean like right, so that's what right. i was telling him i was like you're welcome <laughs> gen <laughs> x we're dope we, we, like gen x did elevate <laughs> they they took this you know like you know, basically what was intended to be a throwaway product and elevated right. it to a pop culture phenomenon. So, 
Yes, um, because yeah. we grew up and we wanted to see the shit that we liked as kids. And I feel like we were the first, the generation that were like, oh, we're still curious and creative and still like these things that we didn't outgrow them. We just mm -hmm. evolved them, right? We right. just like, oh, let's make them into, we want to see them act live action. We want to da, 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 like, sure. you know, so I feel like, you know, we grew, people grew, went mm -hmm. into places of power and we're like making these things happen. And I feel like that's you know it's still cool you can still be our age and go to comic cons and and all those different things like it's still acceptable and we're still in it and i don't know yeah. all that well, all that good stuff but let's our... get back let's get back to you navi luke let's get back to you <laughs> okay, okay the people okay. are like yeah that's enough that's enough mm -hmm. so i've always find it interesting and i say it all the time that i have conversations with my friends and i find out shit that maybe i didn't even know because I'm not asking you when we're out dinner or we're at Art Basel or where, but I'm not asking mm -hmm. you your personal in-depth questions about your history. So I find it fascinating. So would you tell the folks just briefly a little bit, like where were you born and raised that little nugget? Cause I want to see is Wikipedia right or wrong? Well, let me slip in here <laughs> and say, I have actually edited my own Wikipedia. Oh. So the information is generally right. <laughs> Uh, my name is Luke Chu. Uh, I'm nice. a Los Angeles-based artist, and I was born in Philadelphia in 1973. And um, But three months later, I was moved to the city of Fresno, California, where I spent the next 18 years, um, you know, kind of growing up in a not-so-great part of California, but, like, you know, in, in the 70s. Um, but... Right. I went on to go to school at California Polytechnical State University, San Luis Obispo, um, in the Central Coast, where I studied graphic design. And um, after being there for a while, I moved to Los Angeles in 2003, where I ended up uh, like not really being able to find a job and then falling into a career as a uh, studio artist, which... Um, I have had the great fortune of being able to continue doing to this day. Um, my disciplines include both painting and I also do designer toys um, or, or toys that are inspired by my paintings. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a convention very soon, actually this week, called uh, Designer Con, at, which is held in the Anaheim Convention Center. Um, my work, um, I've had, like, I usually, in in Los Angeles, I usually show with a gallery called Corey Helford Gallery, and I just had a solo show there in August, late August into September, so, um, and uh, it, went, it went great. I was, you know, pretty happy uh, with the way it came out, and, um, yeah, doing my best to kind of get out there still. Um, whether it's posting Instagrams or using AutoCut on TikTok, so on oh, the tip tops, on the tip tops. That, so, so yeah, that's verbatim. When I was looking at your Wikipedia, I was like, he has a Wikipedia first and foremost. Second of all, I was like, who updated this? So you did because that's verba verbatim. And I was like, I didn't know. Like when we drive up north, we stop and we stay in Fresno. And this last time, we stayed in Clovis. And oh. you, so you, it says you graduated from. Clovis High School? I, I, Clovis, like, I, I, no... I graduated from Clovis West High School. Yes. Yeah. I had no idea. And I was like, that's crazy. If this, if I'm going to ask him <laughs> if this is real. So thanks for the rundown and, and, yes. and having it precise because you were already prepped because all you got to do is read your Wikipedia. <laughs> you got your notes. I got you got it, your notes. I got it open right here. <laughs> but, so, but I want to know, and I'm sure the people want to know, what is your root? What was that moment or moments that, you, that hit you when you were younger? You're like, this is what I want to do. I want to be a artist. I want to be a graphic designer. Or, but most, most, I think better is when it shifted. Is it true that one of your teachers said you're a mediocre designer, but you're an amazing illustrator? Is that true? Something like that. So, so, so um, <laughs> I, I, I've been drawing like almost all my life, right? Like since I was. I, 
I recall the first time I was introduced to the idea of drawing, and that was probably when I was four years old. And it was from my mother who showed me how to draw Mickey Mouse. I was in my, I, I was at my aunt's house, and you know she had two much older kids, and I was bored to you know to the point of annoying. And she's like, here, you know. <laughs> gonna draw draw this and i i guess i had a bit of an aptitude toward it and i kind of fell in love with it and i was you know drawing a lot through um you know like kindergarten and like grade school and you know the you know all all of my teachers were impressed and you know, so like, you know, the, the pats on the head and, you know, all the carrots, you know, definitely like kind of, you know, fueled my my interest in um, the art of visual communication. Um, around the time I uh, went to college, I kind, kind of came to a crossroads because, you know, the prevailing stereotype of an artist in a, in mm. especially like you know, the late eighties, early nineties was that they were starving. And the idea of being a starving artist is not like this romantic idea for me. Like at least not when I was 17 or, you know, whatever, right. you know, was interested in the idea of, you know, and I, I think also this is probably like my parents, like inserting ideas into my head, like, you know, you don't want to be starving. And, um, they, we, what, what is it? We, I decided like, yo, there's a graphic design department at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and it's a good one. And I should like, you know, I actually got admitted into Cal Poly under the graphic communications department, but in which is the study of like print and reproduction technologies. And I, you know, but the entire time I was there, I was taking nothing but graphic design classes because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being around other designers. I enjoyed the idea of the crit wall mm. being, you know, like torn apart and then forcing yourself to problem solve, <laughs> you know, your way right. out of that box. And and then like to like see your work against much more talented and much less talented, you know, people's, right. you know, kind of like forces you to like see your own work, you know, and see other solutions, you know, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, it just broadens your mind. And so I, I studied graphic design and it was around the time when I graduated, I had taken like life drawing classes and illustration camp class, uh, an illustration class and a painting class. And like, basically my like painting and illustration teachers kind of pulled me aside and said, Hey, like Luke, you know, um, you're like a, yeah, you're, you're an okay graphic designer, but you're a <laughs> much better <laughs> illustrator. You should really consider like pursuing illustration. And I was like, oh, okay, good to know. And like, I was like, so do you recommend going to um, like a grad school after this? And they're like, sure. Um, it's not completely necessary, but you know, mm. like, so it's always, you know, um, uh, you know, if you can afford it, it's a good idea. And then I go, should I like go to art center or like, right, you know, Otis Holy or Grail. something like that? Right. And they're like, no, <laughs> you should go to a normal university that offers an art program because those schools will offer a much more well-rounded education. You know, you'll, you know, be around people of different disciplines you'll see the world in a much broader way. And right. I ended up going down to the school of hard knocks graduate, <laughs> graduate <laughs> program. <laughs> and, um, um, you know, and basically kind of fell into this hole of like self-destructive behavior. I got caught up in the entire like big Oxycontin boom and was doing a lot of drinking and a lot of drugs and a lot of, 
like dumb shit. The reason why I moved to Los Angeles in 2003 was because I basically had worn out my welcome, <clears throat> my welcome in San Luis Obispo. Um, you know, like, and went through, you know, my quarter life crisis and, you know, returned to, you know, my parents had moved to Los Angeles by then and, mm. you know, returned to them, you know, with my tail like tucked between my, my legs. Uh, but then basically, you know, used the experiences that I had and the, a lot of, did a lot of self-reflection and kind of, you know, used the idea of addiction as a metaphor for relationships because to a certain degree it is and um you know took that and used it to kind of fuel my artwork and um then you know started showing my work i'm best known for this kind of bear character and the bear character is this metaphor for myself and the reason why there's a bear character is because it kind of is rooted in this, like these nicknames that I got as a young person. First of all, I'm Chinese. And so the people, you know, I was in relationship, intimate relationships with, uh, with me would have like pet names like, oh, you're like my panda, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm a bigger guy. <laughs> so like, you know, I get it. And then I had my, one of my best friends, Jamie and I, like we were on acid and we were like, tripping balls at my uh my uh my college you know home and like we suddenly decided that like oh fuck we're like fucking care bears you're like i'm like fucking sunshine bear <laughs> and like you know and i'm like laughs a lot bear and fucking you know and i used to live in that house where like you know when the bars closed people would occasionally trickle into our place for the after party and we were right. like just like you know tripping out and like running up to people going hey we're, I'm, I'm like fucking sunshine bear and i'm fucking laughs a lot bear what bear are you and like people would give us like a dumb answer and I'm like okay whatever and then like we ran up to this one guy and in my intoxicated hallucinating mind i was under the impression that like, you get this vibe like oh this guy is a fucking violent drunk and he is ready to fucking kick ass so we should like shower him with sa sunshine and laughter and like make him feel better and we asked him, I'm, you know, like, which bear are you? And he says, you guys are fucking bullshit bears. And we were just, <laughs> Jamie and I look at each other and we think to ourselves, this is the most hilarious thing. And we go running off. And after that, uh, my friend Jamie, she is Jamie Bear and I am Luke Bear. And to this very day, we still refer to each other as this, you know, those nicknames. And so when it came time for me to like start painting, I was very much influenced by the pop culture scene of like Takeshi Murakami, uh, pop art scene of like Takeshi Murakami and Yoshitomo Nara, mm -hmm. and Cause, you know, uh, Camille Rose Garcia, uh, yeah. Gary Baseman. Um, so much of the art that was happening here in Los Angeles is very character driven. And I uh, wanted to, you know, I was very much inspired by that, created this bear character, and that bear character is me. And so I used um, that as a, and then I also came up with this like silly kind of like philosophy behind the idea of using anthropomorphized characters. And that is that by using anthropomorphized characters, you are bypassing the potential ageism racism and sexism that is associated mm. with human characters like if mm. like you take any of like the narratives that i've explored in my work before and you like insert a middle-aged asian male in there it just wouldn't have the same connectivity and and appeal or you know that um a bear would <laughs> would right. have like, you know, you, you see the, 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 you know, these anthropomorphized characters and it's easier to, for you as the audience to insert yourself into it. You know, like, you know, we all grew up watching cartoons. We all grew up watching Looney Tunes and like Saturday morning cartoons and, you know, whatever. And so we're already trained to be able to decipher the idea of anthropomorphization. And right. 
yeah, that's um, yeah, that that is the basic gist of the work. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I, like I never thought of your the reason why you do, you know you do it's what also you because do. that tra- painting bears is a lot easier than painting humans right <laughs> like like humans are hard <laughs> I, I just did a humans painting are hard. Uh, <laughs> hands are hard <laughs> hands are hard that fourth that that fifth finger is the biggest pain in the fucking ass and I, so i just did a painting <laughs> for a show um uh that was like a, a legend of zelda show and I mm. did a painting of Link, the protagonist from Legend of Zelda. And, you know, it's a humanoid elf-like creature. And, oh my god, I spent hours and hours and hours freaking reworking the face, reworking the face, reworking the face. Because, like, the eyes just weren't set right. You know, right. The, the distance between the, the mouth and the nose has to be just right for me to like feel comfortable like oh, okay yeah that that looks right you know the cheekbones right. the, like the the jawline the neck whatever it's um yeah human being he, humanoids are hard they're no, hard so. it, but i i love the fact that the reasoning behind why you went the direction that you did because then everyone can insert themselves in right and and mm-hmm. if you're not familiar with with I call him Navi Luke. If you're not familiar with Navi Luke's work is, you know, you really tackle some, some really hard personal issues. And I think everyone can put themselves, you know, put themselves in that position, imagine themselves there. Um, or at least get the you bring them in with the bears. All. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's... I think that's, that's fascinating. Um, yeah. But so another thing I want to talk to you about is how do you deal? You've been in the game for a long time, super successful. I think out of a lot of artists, you're one of them probably, in my opinion, one of the most bootlegged, <laughs> you know, artists out there. How do you deal with wanting to evolve, but not abandon your audience? Your fans. I'm going to give the most honest, straightforward yeah. answer that's to that. What, that's what we want, Navi Luke. That's what we want. Money. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. That's want what I'm talking make, about. I want to make a fucking living. I want to be able to pay the rent. I, I, I My monthly expenses that's are it. stupid. And, um, <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> and it's... Um, <laughs> And if I don't sell my fucking paintings, um, you know, I don't have a fucking investment group like Damien Hurst, you know, right, uh, behind right. me who will buy my stuff in order to in order to over to artificially inflate the value of it. Like I'm right, you know, like literally like hanging out, you know, like my work is bought by people who enjoy what I do. And it's also bought by people who like, I don't know, like how often, you know, you buy original art, but like whenever I buy original art, I look at galleries and I want the quintessential piece by said artist. I want like, if I'm going to ever buy a shepherd fucking fairy painting, it is going to have an Andre the fucking giant in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be full blown shepherd fairy. Got it's it. It's going to be a full blown shepherd fairy. If I'm ever going right. to buy a fucking, you know, like, um, uh, like a Gary B, like you know, there's and there's a lot of ways of being able to kind of transition out. It's about the slow transition. It's about like right. incorporating things in there that like. You know, like the start, you start incorporating elements and then you like, and like, like, you know, sometimes I just fucking, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I will do something that is n- like a little bit more, a little bit unexpected of me. And just like, I, I did, um, a series of paintings just this, mu- this past season. Like I did two of them. One of them is, you see them on my Instagram. One of them is the link painting, which you know, I mean, narratively is like what I do, but it's like it's got fucking Link in there. It's got a fucking video game <laughs> character in there, and there's yeah. no bears at all. 
and the other one I did was a painting uh, for Giant Robots um, post-it note show. And like the post-it note show paintings are just like little scribbles I do on, on post-it notes. They're, you know, the, the show is great. It is a show that has been happening for 19 years now and all artwork wow. is $25. And um, like, and so I did this uh, painting last year um, that I call um, the mountain doesn't care about your achievements and the mountain is cold. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> um, like rockish kind of like uncaring, unfeeling, you know, inorganic thing is I, in my eyes is a metaphor for my, my apathy. And, um, mm. and I did the, uh, I did a post-it note painting. And so then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do a refined version of it for the show. And the only reason why I did it is because it's a small painting. It's fun. I'm in a comfortable position right now because I just had, I finally got paid from my last show and it's like, nice. well, you know, I'll fucking Congrats. do it just for, for, for the fuck of it. Uh, but, right. and of course, like, you know, the engagements to it, like on social media are generally pretty low because, you know, it's not a fucking bear. But, you know, like, <laughs> whatever. Like, at least I'm planting seeds. And so it's about, like, you know, right. you know, like, like trickling things out. You don't, you just don't fucking, like, you know, you don't, I mean, like, if you have nothing to lose, then fucking dive off the deep end, you know? Right. But I've, um, yeah, I've, I've got a roof over my head that I need to take care of. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you got you bills know, to pay. I got bills to pay. Thank you for, I'm, yeah. yeah. Thank you for being, <laughs> for keeping it real and keeping it honest. This is what I'm talking about. This, cause this is what people want to hear. Like, this is the real deal, Holyfield stuff. This is, <laughs> this is, you know, like there's there's two sides of every coin you know you have success in a lot of people's eyes they're like wow he's amazing i want to get there right mm -hmm. and and they also but they also need to know the real deal right mm -hmm. they need to know that it, it, there's some difficult decisions maybe not oh, so difficult maybe i, I do years paintings. ago this would have been like super hard i, I do paintings about how burnt out i am on the bear gracias for listening or watching word to your mama I have a unique cross-section of guests on here because I'm a purpose-driven creative consultant who thrives at the intersection of creative innovation, technology, and community impact. There are a few ways we could work together. So check out ritziperiwico.com to learn more. Like all the fucking right. time. Like I have a painting called um, Even a Monkey, and it's got like a painting of a monkey sitting on the ground cross-legged and scattered around him are just drawings of the bear over and over and over and over and over again. And then I did another painting called Burnout where it was the bear, there's smoke like pouring out of his eye holes and like surrounding him are drawings of the fucking bear. It's all, you know, I mean like, you know, if I am going to have to fucking like, if I'm frustrated by the fact by, by this character, I will have I have no problem sharing that in my my work because, right. you know, the work my work is generally about, you know, struggle. It is about being disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. It is about, you know, relationship issues and self-hate and this and that. And um, well, like it has been more recently now now that I'm I'm. 50 years old like my work has definitely <laughs> softened up quite a bit is that your 50 year old <laughs> voice <laughs> that's my like i'm older and wiser voice <laughs> let me tell you something ritzy periwinkle the longer i go the the you know and the it, once my voice starts slurring a little i'll probably sound like mitch mcconnell <laughs> like that's, oh that's, no, please that's don't, please don't. Oh, Navi Luke. Oh, Navi Luke. Oh, Navi Luke. I just hope that, like, I don't become, like, you know, one of those freaking, like, you know, like, oh, now that I'm older, I, the conservatives had it right all the fucking time, jackass. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't be one of those. Don't be one of those, please. You can sound like a man. Please don't go that way. Hilarious. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. thank you. We got the nice history. We got the, you know, the roots. We yep. got the, the motivation, inspiration, the mm -hmm. real deal Holyfield talk of of how you stay in your lane, right? No, right. So now let's get into 
the questions and comments from the audience. Are you ready? Are we streaming this? No, it's not streaming. <laughs> but I already have questions. I have oh, okay. questions. Oh, okay, comments. okay. <laughs> it's not streaming, but it will be. Some of the video will be online. Uh, okay. okay, so okay. the the first one. I have a feeling you're going to know who this is. Kano got to paint a mural in the Chinese museum, and he's not even Chinese like that. How does that make you feel? Welcome to the Kano Red Table. LOL. Good, good on you, Kano. Good on, good on you faking it. <laughs> no, I think that's great. That, that, that's, that's, that's great. Like, you know, I just haven't been kissing the right ass. You know what I mean? Like, and like, you know. <laughs> When I read that question, I was like rolling. I was like, "Yes, I'm gonna ask that for sure." I, I, okay, I, okay. I've I've thought about reaching out to the the Chinese American you know uh, museum. Um, I just, you know, like when you're tired, you're fucking tired. You know, when you, <laughs> <laughs> like when all you want to do is just fucking like sit in your fucking apartment you know all day long and stream fucking lo-fi beats and like stare at tiktok videos <laughs> at the same time in your fucking pajama that's pants that's the dream you do that's the and, dream and the window of opportunity comes to do that you fucking do that <laughs> what you just describe is an ideal day to me as well lo-fi beats pjs and tip tops all day yeah. long just jump 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 um that sounds oh like God, the best so Oh, I thought you were going to say that you were going to call them to complain. No, <laughs> and put a no, no, no. That, no. Why you let Kano? He's not even Chinese. Kano's got like, you know, it's like, you know, like, you know, if like through like through someone like Giant Robot, you know, my work will show up at like, you know, the Japanese American National Museum, the Janum, you know, and it's like, I have no business being in the Janum, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm fucking Chinese. So you're gonna let Kano slide. You're gonna I'm, let him slide. I'm, I will let Kano. Like Kano, I love Kano. So like I, if it was anyone, like other than Kano, then like complaints, you know. calls, emails, <laughs> old school <laughs> because letters. I know, but because I know right. him, I know Kano. I yes, I let it slide this time. Just this time. <laughs> Oh, you got, you got, you turned on your sexy voice. That was for Kano. You turned no, on your sexy no, voice for him. Yeah. Kano, cheers. <laughs> okay. Next question. And this goes to when, when I, oh, the rest of us, some of us have moved out of LA, but when we lived in LA, we would go out and eat all the time together. Like oh, yeah. a lot of places together. So oh, yeah. this question is, what do you order for the table? This is from Ginger Snappers, a.k.a. Shane Jessup. Oh, Shane. What do What's I your order go to the... order for the table? Oh, geez. Like, depends on what we're eating, where, what and where we're eating. Right. But like, you always have to like, right. you know, dep okay. It depends on the size of the group. So like, if it is a group of four plus people, you always go to like throw in two appetizers. You know, and they always have to <laughs> like usually dumplings, you know, like um, like if I was going to to like let's, let's say we're going to Din Tai Fung. There's there's Din Tai Fung's mm -hmm. all around the world. Everyone loves Din Tai Fung. You you love Din Tai Fung? The soup dumpling place? I feel like I went with you. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But like, you know, you got to get that those stupid cucumber salads. You got to get like, you know, because you got to got you got to eat something good for yourself. You got to eat like the greens. Um, you know, then you gotta, like, you know, you got you gotta eat like some. You gotta get like a vegetarian appetizer, and then you have to get like a protein appetizer if you're like unless right. you're hanging out with nothing but vegetarians, you know, because right. you gotta get something for the people who are not going to eat the meat, and you're gonna have something that who are going to want to eat nothing but meat, and right, you know, very that, thoughtful, Navi Luke. You know, very like, thoughtful. I've I've become more diplomatic with with age. Oh, let's see. <laughs> nice. There's a it's new Navi Luke on the horizon when you go out to eat. I like I like to hear that. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. final question from the uh, audience is: I feel like this is a new period for his art. What would be the description for this period? And this is from Lofa is a sexy beast. Oh, Lofa. Um, you know, so my earlier work was definitely, um, 
were definitely paintings that were very fixated on my nihilism. And, um, Mm -hmm. you know, lately I've, I've updated my profile, um, description to be macro nihilist, um, micro optimist. And what that means to me is, yeah, I see the world, the universe, whatever, as a big, stupid cosmic joke. But that Mm. doesn't mean I can't enjoy myself. And it's always the little things that, like, I won't say give me hope, but they give me levity. You know, they make me feel Mm. good about being in this world. And it could be little things from, like, having it, you know, a fucking flaming hot Cheeto to, like, (laughs) (laughs) you know, like, having a, a... uh, 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 a warm cup, uh, a hot cup of coffee or like, you know, to seeing my friends when I do get a chance to see my friends, just like to be able to right. spend some time like I'm spending with you right now, Ritzy. Um, like, right. Those are the things that like make life worth living and like to try and like, right. you know, like, I don't know, I'm not a religious person, but like to try and like, you know, like anchor yourself onto things like, like this life looking for purpose life like some kind of purpose in life i'll I'll tell you this like you know as you get older you kind of realize that there was no purpose but the thing is Mm. is that like but to be able to live to take each step forward you know and to discover like find little bits of happiness little bits of joy little bits of peace you know that's what makes life worth living and that's that's real yeah. and um that's a bar yeah yeah don't 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 try and like you know like find satisfaction at, at the unattainable you know but but you know still reach for it you know like right. push yourself you know but like at the same time like find peace and you know the things around you the people around you and um you know like you know don't beat yourself up too hard. I mean, like, you know, when you're 20 or 30, go ahead and beat the shit out of yourself. That's what, that's, <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's what, it's, that's what that era is for. Exactly. Beat your shit, but once shit you, out. Yeah, but once you fucking cross that, get past that and, like, just kind of stem back and look at all the chaos that you left behind you, you know, and, <laughs> and the stuff that's still standing, those are keepers. Right. You know, those, um, those are keepers. Yeah, and I think that, my work, my current work is becoming more reflective of that. You know, yes. I, 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 I did a, 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 on my 50th birthday, uh, my girlfriend um, took me out to um, Japan. And, um, you know, it's a big 5 You got to like go big on your big 5 go And big. I did a painting about um, Family Chiki. So there's a chain of uh, convenience stores in Japan called Family Mart. And one of the things they're known for are is the fami chiki, which is a uh, chicken thigh cutlet, deep fried, served in a bag. And you could, if you want, you could buy pre mayonnaised bread that you could open up, <laughs> insert the, the the piece of um, chicken in between, and make a sando of it. And I love this thing because it is. Two dollars in Japan, Come on. Come <laughs> like it, it. It just brings me so much fucking like joy just to know that like <laughs> you know I could like you know like everyone like thinks oh Japan it must be expensive no 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 it's not that expensive <laughs> like you can yeah I mean you could go and fucking have fucking like a three hundred four hundred dollar fucking sushi meal but you don't have to. You know, right. you can you can you can go and have a ten dollar sushi meal and fucking like realize that like sushi in like the United States is just not that Sucks. great. <laughs> but, exactly. <laughs> but it, it does the trick. Like, you know, no yeah. no hate for any of the sushi places in, in LA or the United <laughs> States. Like, yeah. So like I, I did I do like I have done paintings about that and like I I did a painting um you know what it was called i think it was um but it was a painting 
of like with my like my black bear and my white bear like kind of just sitting on a curb you know like staring out into the distance and the painting is actually kind of reflective of this moment where like i think our uh, mutual friend jesse you and i were just kind of like you know outside like the sitting there and just kind of soaking it up and just talking and stuff like that and like those are the moments that i like cherish now you know and um right. and i'm very grateful for so you know but um so maybe i'm becoming growth, a little bit Nabby more Luke. nostalgic of my in my yeah uh, nostalgic but not it's not really a nostalgia thing because those moments still happen so right yeah you know, you know, but i think i think you're just being a little you're like you're saying you're you're you've gone from total nihilism to oh let's micro micro optimism like <laughs> yes. capture these moments because that's what a life is 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 stringing those moments together and be like looking back and be like well my life, those are pretty good moments because it's not the shit it's not the things those are great you need you know a lot of you know in the moment but those are the things right those like those memories of you and purds sitting mm -hmm. on a curb discussing all the things purds. And, you know <laughs> Um, is that what is that your name? Purds. <laughs> Pur I call him Purdy, but then I call him Purds. Purdy. I call him Purds. Oh my god, um, I totally forgot about that nickname. <laughs> remember, I used to call him Purds, so now I just call him Pur like Purdy. So now it's Purdy. Yeah. So yeah. just like those moments, right? Like those. It, what it is is the human connection moments, yes. right? Is exactly. It, and it, it could have been just you two, not saying jack shit, but on the curb, just right. yep, just exactly. there with each other. That's, exactly. It's so it's like micro tasking happiness, right? It's just like because you can't be happy all the fucking time. That's you, just that's unrealistic. It's you, these yeah. little moments, like oh, and and when you get older and certain certain shit doesn't matter anymore, you're just then you're realizing it. You're not nostalgic. It's like a lot of the the bullshit and the things you thought. I, when we were young, like I look back, I'm like, what the? F I was doing some <laughs> fucked up shit when I was 20, like to myself, to other people. You know what I mean? And it's yes. like, oh, now I see what's important. It's these connections, like these moments, you know, breaking bread and just having conversations. Um, maybe not wanting to go somewhere, but then going and then you're like, oh, I connected with people today. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. that's a good feeling, you know? And so, you know what? I love, I don't I love think... to hear it, Nabi Luke. I don't think you could be able to reflect on it and realize the importance of what you have, you know, what you're you're having now or striving for now, if you didn't go through all that fucked up shit. I truly believe I I truly believe that yeah. human beings learn things one way and one way only, and that way is the hard way. We <laughs> learn. <laughs> That's real. We learn That's things real. the fucking hard way, and you know sometimes we fucking pay like dearly for it and sometimes we come out unscathed but like yeah you know it's um i'm yeah i i'm i'm glad i've made it this long you know um Same. i think yeah yeah like it's um you know the world might be on fire you know but it is you know like we're lucky we're still here though we're still but, here we're lucky we you know mm -hmm. if, if you think about all the shit that you know collectively we've done since we were young we're yeah. alive that's a feat in itself <laughs> do you know what i'm saying like <laughs> alive well thriving um it, it, it's yeah it's when, it's fascinating how you, right how often are you flying ritzy uh, this year i flew a lot because i was in colombia new york and you know spoke at the un and so i, 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 saw, I, I saw something about that that's um that's amazing you're kicking Thank ass you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Like I hadn't flown in for like I flew here and there, like up and down. But then the pandemic happened and then I hadn't flown international since uh, since when I and when I left to go to Colombia the year before I texted woes and purds, J. Mm -hmm. Rue, um, and I was like, yo, I'm on my way to, you know, to Bradley International Airport. The last time I was here is when I was with them. Right, you know what right. I mean? um so yeah so yeah i've been flying a lot more this year so it had been a while why do you ask i ask because like every time i fly like as the plane starts taxiing i have a moment where 
I just kind of like inhale and exhale. And I think to myself, if I die right now, if the plane goes down, I'll be okay. I'll be okay with it. And then I think it again yeah. on the way down. <laughs> on the way down. <laughs> because that's yeah. the, the, where I'm going with this is that like we never know what's going to happen. You never know. Uh, yeah. Like, you, you know, we're, ta- know. we're talking and about survival time, and like driving. Totally. Like, we sh- I should do that every time I fucking start my car because like, right. you know, you, you never fucking know. And it's, you never um, know. You know, we, and like most people, like, you know, when we jump in our car, or drive to the supermarket to pick up some milk and some eggs, like, we don't think to ourselves, like, oh, I can be like T boned, you know, um, you know, like out the parking lot, you know, by some fucking jackass or some, right. you know, idiot who, you know, decided to go racing down the street or whatever, or, you know, like, right. whatever, you know, like, um, I, I was, talking to purds and like you know he was <laughs> i can't it doesn't work for me ritzy i mean like i think i had to have been there because i know the story behind the uh the nickname and um you know there, there's you know just so you know like when ritzy gives you a nickname there is always a story behind that nickname you know my my nickname navi luke you know <laughs> came from me being the navigator where were we going? We were like, oh, in Navi. Miami going to uh, oh, our Basil. <laughs> our Basil. I think Rolf was drawing was driving. R.I.P. Rolf. <laughs> our man. Rest in peace, Rolf. And like, you know, I had the phone. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh where it came from. <laughs> Anyways, you know. Um, but like, so I but I was just thinking, like, you know, like, yeah, we, we're lucky to have survived because, you know, like, you know, we, we think that like life is a given, but like it's you know, you know, you know, it is we not. have to, you know, we, we, we live in a much more dangerous world than we think it is. That's real. That's yeah. really real. And, you know, now it's, I mean, I'm 11 years in with the supernatural bear, but now that really helped me to see a lot of shit clearly, especially because I was an older mom. But whenever we leave the house, mm-hmm. uh, we leave the house from each other. Mm-hmm. All I saw, I was like, I told the, I told them, I told the bears here. I said, no matter what, I don't care if you're just going down the street to get gas. We always say I love you because yeah. you never know. Like you never, you never know. know. It could be the last time. Yeah. And and it, it's funny that you said that about flying because every time I fly, short distance, long distance, doesn't matter. I do the same thing. I'm like, <laughs> we're taxiing, we're about to go lift off, right? And this is what happens to me. I'm like. If it goes down, it goes down. I lived a fucking crazy, awesome life. I've done the things. But every time we get up and we level out, I'm always like, we're fucking flying. <laughs> like I always think to myself, like, fucking humans are crazy. Flight is amazing. <laughs> it is. <laughs> like, this is like, it, every, like, I've flown so many times. It doesn't matter. Every time I'm like, wow, we're like really just chilling, <laughs> flying in the air. Like, we're in science a fucking is tube. amazing. Going fucking four to five hundred miles an hour in the it's, sky. It still amazes me. It amazes me every time. Like I never take it for granted. So anyway, no. okay. Yes. Before I let you go, we got the not so not so rapid fire questions. The AK slow as hell questions because it could be slower. They could be quick depending okay. on where you're at. Sure. Let's do this. Okay, Three words to describe yourself. Asian American artist. <laughs> yeah, concur. I concur. <laughs> okay. The next one. What's, what's the best piece of advice you received? Be patient. I don't know. Like, what's the best piece of advice that I received? <laughs> Put a little lemon on that. I'm joking. I'm joking. I don't know. Yes. I mean, like, you know, like, I, love- I, I mean, I've got, look, I've gotten tons of amazing advice in my life, but have I followed through with it? Like, <laughs> you know, and like, you know, it's, it, it, you know, the best advice is always like this weird hindsight thing. Right. It's like, you know, you're like, it's like, you know, slow down, you know, fucking like be patient, <laughs> whatever, you know, and you're like, you know, like you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. But in your mind, you're like, fuck that, fuck that, fuck that. And then you're like forced <laughs> into a fucking situation where you have to be patient and you have to fucking like, you know, do whatever. And then like you come out of it and you're like, oh, patience. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, that's what they were talking about. <laughs> right, right. Like, did I get that advice? Yes, I got that advice. Did I follow through with that advice? Unwillingly. But, <laughs> but, you but know. I do like put some lemon on it, put a little lemon on it. <laughs> because that's always, I cannot be in my house without lemon. Like, right. Like put a little, put a little I cannot put a little <laughs> fine. put a little lemon on it. There, there That's it the is. one. That's, That's the keeper. That's the keeper. That's the sound bite right there. Okay. Um the next one. This will be interesting because I'm interested to see where you're at nowadays. What's the song that you always play to get you hyped when you need it? What's your go to? And it I'm sure it evolves, but where are we at now, Nabby Lukester? Uh you know, like I, I play to get me hype. Or maybe you know you you. What's your go-to song that just makes you feel good? Oh, uh, shit! All What's right. What's heavy yeah. rotation? Are I'm, you checking uh, your iPod? I'm checking. I'm checking my Spotify. <laughs> fucking <laughs> like because like I don't even really pay attention to song names anymore. You know, like right. You know, it's a whole, it's a whole new game. Like, you, what you are you know, gonna look up your wrapped? Your 2023 <laughs> rap. Up a rap. <laughs> I'm gonna look up a fucking rap. <laughs> so who's your number one artist or your most played song? <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's like you know, that's that. That's that. Oh my god, this song, this question is is just like I don't even know how to find my rap anymore. Where's my fucking rap? <laughs> to say is that I think it's a co conspiracy that rap is not a hundred percent accurate because there's no fucking way. I love SZA, but there's no fucking way. That I played her that much. There's no way. I think my 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 rap is pretty good because I was just like um like okay yeah I'll listen to this artist a lot. Um, let me see like uh, like what gets me pumped pumped okay um like when I'm driving there's a series uh, there's two songs that mix into each other by uh, the band Carpenter Brute that i listen to like and it makes me like want to go flying down the freeway um let me see. <laughs> yes that's the kind yes what is that <laughs> and um the songs are um they're 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 a series they're called one of them's called night day stalker and it mixes into the song called night prowler and it's this is kind of like oh. techno like it's french techno like industrial dark wave whatever and like yes. at night when you fucking put that shit on and the freeway is just sparse enough so you could just go like you know like you know the full 70 miles an hour whoa slow it down <laughs> Debbie, sir. slow it the fuck down you don't want to drive <laughs> You know, you don't want to drive unreasonably. You want to feel like you could drive unreasonable, but you don't want to really drive unreasonable. Look, I'm also driving like an 18 year old like Honda Civic. You know, so like, like 70, she, 70 she, is she can't she can't take it. She can't take it. She yeah, can't 70 take is it. Like, is the sweet spot. Like, I feel like I'm passing people. You know, not like, but I'm not. At 70, are you passing people late at night? On the 10 oh freeway, yes. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, my goodness. Um, That's hilarious. But, like, you know, mm. like, most of the time, I'm, like, I'm listening to bands like, you know, Men I Trust or, you know, like, just, like, you know, just kind of, like, indie, like, white indie shit. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just feeding my fucking like little inner white boy. You're in your little white boy era. <laughs> exactly. I, it, you know, it's, it, it. I think it's, I, I, I think it's rooted in like, you know, this like, this weird desire to fit in that's rooted in my like fucking like, you know, my pathetic and sad Fresno upbringing. Apparently, I like, heard so about Clovis. I oh, heard yeah. about Clovis when we stayed there. Like, if you're brown, get out of town. Like, if oh, you yeah. see a Clovis yeah. sign, they're like, if you're brown, turn around. That's what <laughs> we were told. But we yeah. stayed oh, in yeah, Clovis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Or like, just close your door. Like, close your doors and close your blinds. <laughs> you know, it's um, <laughs> it's like you know, it's it's not. Uh, and and then there's like, yeah, yeah, no. Fresno's. I mean, like Fresno's. Oh, well, Fresno's also changed a lot. Like it, it is has, has a large Latino and Southeast Asian population now, and um, you know, but I'm sure like there's there there's still some like you know you know like old good old boys 
you know, hanging out, yeah. you know, out there. That's what and, they said. Um, the, yeah. Those two songs that you mentioned, yeah. I'm going to put them on the Word to Your Mama guest hype song playlist. It's on Spotify. <sighs> and whoever is the latest guest, it gets up to the top. So this oh, will no. be the first time. <laughs> that we have and we have everything navi luke like you think it's all hip-hop it's not i have everything i have uh, all genres i've had young folks on here our generation but this is the first time i'm gonna say that we had like you know industrial you know <laughs> french industrial techno, you know like, french techno <laughs> french techno i think it'll be the first time but it will go with everything so it'll be, there'll be a link in the show notes to that okay, okay final okay. Final question. What will be your legacy? My paintings. I, I don't have kids. Um, I They're your kids. You know, yeah, I don't. They're my creations. Um, right. I, you know, um, like, don't really, like, I'm 50 years old. I don't, I don't really want kids anymore. Like, you know, that's. You did you, know. you though? I think there was a was time, there a time when I was, I, I was curious hmm. to see how it influenced, influence, you know, my work. Um, but. Right. You know, like, like, would it make me a, a soft boy? You know, like, <laughs> would I like to suddenly be all like, fucking, oh, I love my daughter. I'm going to fucking paint flowers. <laughs> I think it would take you like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, my bear is all about happiness now. Like, you know, <laughs> like, I, I, I think that, like, I was, you know, curious about having children as kind of like a social experiment, you know, and then right. also like the legacy thing, you know, but like. Um, right. You know, but like, I I think I'm doing the world a favor <laughs> by not having kids. You know, no. like, but but I, your but your legacy is your is your paintings. You they bring, you know, even though you 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 tackle some very personal hard subjects, mm -hmm. they bring people joy. I like to think they. I, you know, the 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 kindest comments that I ever get is, like, you know, people saying that like. You know, when, after like seeing my work and, you know, kind of like deep diving into what I've done, you know, the thing that they kind of walk away with is the realization that they're just not, they're not alone with like these, you know, yeah. you know, things that they're feeling. And that's one of the most flattering things I, I ever hear, you know, and um, yeah, like, I think th I, I, I would like to hope that like, you know, the way I communicated things you know from like you know where i was in my 30s where i was in my 40s and now where i am in my 50s is like you know the work evolves and you know like it's communicates to you know a variety of people and you know we'll we'll see how it goes but um i yeah i i feel like i said like you know the being a being a working artist is you know, uh, amazing. But if you don't fucking give it up to luck, then, you know, fuck you, <laughs> you know, like right. luck, you know, luck's has... not involved. If you don't think it's involved, it's involved. <laughs> well, for it is sure. involved. Like, you know, like, yeah, I work, I work my ass off. You know, I will, you know, I will, I have, I work like when I'm cramming, I'm working 14 hour, 50, you know, hour days, 16 right. hour days, like fall asleep in the studio, wake up and just go straight back to work again. But the thing is, is that, and I love every fucking minute of it, minute of it. But the thing is, is that it's not the work that fucking like got me through the door. Um, I mean, to a certain degree, but like, you know, it's also about timing, like the people who see my work, right. the people who, the, the area in which I show my work, is it like a, a um, you know, a, you know, fertile bed for like people to be able to, you know, experience, appreciate and support, you know, these kind right. of, you know, um, these, these efforts, you know, like, you know, I, I've had a lot of artists reach out to me and go like, hey, you know, can you give me some advice on how to like, you know, get started? And I'm like, where are you at? Like, you know, Minnesota. And I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, yeah, sure, there's social media, but like social media, I don't know. I'm an old timer, so I, I, I'm not as familiar with, you know, these things. You know? Yeah. And I think your artwork it, it it came out at a certain moment in time that i don't mm -hmm. know if you were to come out later or say like those teachers no. that told you 
what if they would have never said you're okay designer but you're better here and what if they would have said oh yeah you have to go to art center then that could have uh, fucked you up and you we we wouldn't be talking right now like oh, we wouldn't like, know each other do you know I, what i'm saying it's like such a small little window that you it happened all at the right time well but, I, I didn't i didn't like, go to grad school at all so like you know i, exactly. I you know what, what but whatever if you would have gone what what yeah. what could have happened? This might not be happening right now. Right, this no, might have uh, not happened for you, right? Like it was the right moment at the right time right. and the right circumstances with the right people. Like you said, there's a little bit of luck, but that luck got you in the door. But your hard work kept Keep, you there. Kept right? me in the room, right? Yeah, absolutely. Kept you in the room, and you're still here. You're in your fifties, and all the shit that you you know you mentioned that you went through and how you know you burned some bridges and you know you're over here on this side but i also think just like your honda where 70 is the sweet spot your artwork is this nice sweet spot like even though you tackled some dark subjects kids to 90 year olds it's like anyone can love it it's not yeah. like it's too dark. Like you know, well, the, 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 like the older stuff was lo- was way dark, but <laughs> like, but you know, you know it what was, I'm saying? But like yeah. the the gist of it is like, oh, it's the sweet spot of all the stuff. So, anyways, yeah. Well, well you know, I'm, gracia, thank you. So, go ahead. Yeah, I was what gonna, gonna say, say, um, you know, the um, I don't even know what I was gonna say. I no, I completely agree with everything that you have to say. So, but like. <laughs> oh, I, oh! I wanted to mention that, like, just so people know, I started doing the art thing when I was thirty, like, not in my twenty. You know, like, I, I kind of, I pers- started pursuing the art thing in earnest when I was thirty. So, like, if you're like twenty something and you're like, you know, struggling and but you have like ideas and whatever, like, you know, it's never too late to fucking like, you know, like jump in there. And, you know, I've met artists who have, like, who started, like, when they were in their late 40s, you know, right. and so it's, um, you know. It's never too late. Never too late, you know. You, you, you if don't it's go in, in, you do it. You don't go, but you don't go in, like, with, like, you know, expecting, like, to become some blue chip fucking hotshot artist. You know, it could go there, but, you know, you you do it because it's something that you, like, you know, like fuck, I've got nothing else to fucking do right now. I fucking might as well, like you know, <laughs> doodle around on my fucking, you know, my iPad or my, you know, you know, draw them, you know, on like this, you know, canvas or whatever. So you know, just right, you know, just do it. As Nike just says, just do it, like like the sh- like the Nikes, like, like the, the Nikes. Nikes. <laughs> so Navi, look before we head out, where. People, it's going to be in the show notes, but let the people know where they can find you. You just had the show in August. By the time this comes out, Decon would have already passed. Yes. Um, so, you know, let us know what what, what do you got planned for the big, uh, you know, 2024. Um, uh, in May, I will be doing a show at Dorothy Circus in London. And I think in November, oh. I'll be doing a show at Bine Art in Sydney. So, um, excuse. Yeah, I've never been to Sydney, so I'm, I'm, you know, I've never been to Australia. I've never actually been south of the fucking equator. So, like, oh, I am looking forward to the day make that I move. can. You got to make it happen. Flush the toilet, record the video, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, put it next to a fucking video of the toilet that I flushed. In the northern hemisphere, and show us, yeah, and that's show hilarious. Us, yes, yes, that, <laughs> yes, that will that will be a reel <laughs> on Instagram. And if you see it on the tip top, I'll have all the filters and the difference. You'll have oh, yes, your yes. gimbal by then. You'll have your yes, yes, to, I'll my to... gimbal by then. I'll do all these sweeping. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now, and I'll, I'll throw in some like dubstep in there. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, please, please do that. Please let us know. I definitely want to see that. Okay. Navi Luxters, thank yes. you so much. Thanks for having me. It was so me. great to see you again. And thank you for, you know, being so, so candid and, and keeping <laughs> it real with me and everyone else because they're going to appreciate this. So I really appreciate you. The pleasure was mine. It was fun. It's always great seeing you, Ritzy. Yeah.